Welcome back to another episode of Mathematics Teacher Talks to His Computer. Here we go, a flashback from the 2015 HSC Maths exam. We have the graph here is shown to be y equals e to the x times 1 plus x. So they've already graphed that for us. Question is, how many solutions are there to the equation e to the x multiplied by 1 plus x is equal to 1 minus x squared? Pause the video and see if you can figure out which one you would be choosing. Okay, so the secret to this question is that um, solutions to equations are when uh, graphically where the two equations are equal, okay? The reason we're going to be taking that route is because we already have the graph of e to the x times 1 plus x right here. So all we need to do is figure out what 1 minus x squared looks like, plot it on here, and then see how many intersections we have, okay? Wherever these two graphs intersect, we will have a solution to left-hand side equals right-hand side. Okay, we should know x squared is a parabola. We should know negative x squared is a concave down parabola. And the one is going to shift us up by one unit. So here is what our graph of one minus x squared looks like. We can get our x-intercepts by solving one minus x squared equal to zero, and we get positive or negative one. Anyway, as long as you get a roughly correct sketch, you should see that these two lines are crossing over in two places. So that this equation has two solutions for our two intersection points. Okay, well done if you said two. Today's lesson uh, is all about geometric series. So last lesson we were looking at geometric sequences. Today we are going to be adding those together and forming a series. So this is what a geometric series looks like. Uh, as from last video, we said that the first term is still represented by a, and now the number that we are multiplying to get to our next term is represented by r. So here's an expression for the um, sum of the first n terms of a geometric series, and I've labeled this as equation one. We're going to try and form an equation that can add this sum together for us in a very quick and easy way. The way we're going to get that is we're going to take our sum and we're going to multiply every single term by r. So now a becomes ar, ar becomes ar squared, so on and so forth until the last term is now ar to the power of n. Okay, the reason I've done this is because now in this top and bottom line, we have a lot of stuff in common. We have an AR on top and bottom, AR squared on top and bottom. In fact, everything is in common except the first term and the last term. What this means is if I do equation one, take away equation two, so on the left-hand side, I'll have SN, take away R, SN. On the right-hand side, everything that's in common will be canceled out, leaving us with A, take away AR to the power of N. So by doing this, all those middle terms have cancelled out and we have a nice quick and simple formula. The left-hand side, we're going to factor out the Sn. So we have Sn outside of one minus R. On the right-hand side, I'm gonna factor out the A to get A outside of one minus R to the N. Now, if we divide both sides by one minus R, we get this formula for the sum of the first N terms of a geometric series. You don't really need to know how this is formed. I'm just showing you how we get this formula that we're going to use today to sum together the first n terms of a geometric series. All you need is the first term, the value of r, and the number of terms that you want to sum together. Okay, this uh, formula is of course on your reference sheet. You just need to know when to apply it and how to apply it. Uh, there is an alternative form for this formula on your reference sheet with the one and the r to the n swapped places. I have no idea why Nessa gives this to you. They essentially are giving you two different versions of the same formula that does the exact same thing. Okay, so for today, I'm just gonna use this version because it's gonna give me the right answer no matter the situation. So yeah, Nessa, please explain. Okay, here's our first example. We have a geometric series. Uh, we can see that we are starting with a value of a half and each time we are doubling and changing the sign. So we must be multiplying by minus two each time. We are gonna find the sum of the first 15 terms of the series. So we're gonna find S15. So once again, here is our A value, here is our R value. Here is our formula for the sum of the first n terms. We're gonna substitute in these two values and we're gonna let n equal to 15. Okay, when your r value is negative, please make sure you use brackets or you're probably gonna get something wrong with a negative in the wrong spot. So we have a is a half, one minus negative two, all to the power of 15. On the bottom, we have one take away negative two. Putting this into a calculator gets us a value of 5,461 and a half. So that is what the first 15 numbers in this pattern add up to give us. 
Okay, onto our next example. Once again, we have a geometric series. We want to find the sum from 3 up to 7,203. So the extra step to this question compared to our last one is that we don't know which number in the series 7203 is. So we don't know how many terms we want to sum together using our sum formula. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what number in this pattern 7,203 is. So we say our a value is three. We're multiplying by seven each time. We have our nth term formula from the previous video. This is the nth term in the sequence. We're gonna set this formula equal to 7,203 and we're going to try and solve for n. So we have three times seven to the power of n minus one is equal to 7203. Dividing both sides by three, we get seven to the n minus one is equal to 2401. Now, if you want, you could take log base seven of both sides, or if you can see a shortcut in question like this and you know to yourself, well, I know that seven to the power of four is 2401, you're more than welcome to take these shortcuts. They're not gonna lose you any marks as long as your thought process and your working is clear, okay? So you don't have to do every step. If you can see quick shortcuts here and there, I encourage you to take them if you're confident. Okay, so if seven to the four is equal to 2401, that tells us that n minus one must be equal to four, which means that n must be five. So 7203 is the fifth term in this series. That's good. Now we can use our sum formula and we can sum together the first five terms. So we have our first term of three, our r value of seven, and we're gonna have it n is five. Crunching this through a calculator gets us an answer of 8,403, and there is the sum of the first five terms. Okay, for our next example, we have the first n values of this series, sum to give 108,251, find the value of n. Okay, now we're doing a more backwards kind of version with our sum formula. Now we, we know what the value of a is, we know what the value of r is, and we know what the sum is, we don't know what the value of n is, so we have to work backwards using our formula. So geometric series, starting value is 11, multiplying by three each time. Here we have once again our sum formula. We're going to set this equal to 108,251, and we're gonna try and solve for uh, n. We're trying to find how many terms are adding to give this number. So we have 11 outside of one minus three to the power of n over one minus three equals 108,251. Now, if we, on the bottom, we get one minus three, which is negative two. In my next step, I'm going to multiply by minus two, so to get rid of the denominator, then I'm going to divide by 11. Okay, so if we take 108, 251, if we multiply it by negative two and divide it by 11, we get negative 19, 6, 8, 2. Now, subtracting one from both sides, so we get um, the one is gone on the left, we've got negative three to the power of n is equal to minus 19, 6, 8, 3, it's a negative number, don't forget. Now we can times both sides by negative one to get rid of our negatives and make it a bit simpler. Now we can solve for n by taking log base three of both sides to get rid of our three to the power of. Okay, log base three and three to the power are going to cancel out, leaving us with n. On the right, we have log base three of 19683. Once again, this is how we uh, uh, type this into our Casio calculators using our change of base formula. If you type this in, you should get a value of nine, and this tells us that the first nine terms of this geometric series will add together and give us the required number. Okay, up next, um, a pretty similar question, but maybe a little bit more challenging in terms of algebra, potentially. How many terms of the following series give a sum of 1023 over 1024? If that last example made perfect sense to you, I encourage you to pause and try this one by yourself because our process is very similar. We are using our sum formula to solve for n and we know what the sum is equal to. Okay, so here we go. Our a value, our starting value is a half and to get from a half to a quarter, we are multiplying by a half. So a and r are both equal to one half. We have our sum formula, which we're going to set equal to 1023 over 1024. Once again, we are going to solve for the power of r, which is n. Okay, a bit messy, but we have a half outside of one minus a half to the n over one minus a half equals our required target. Okay, on the bottom, one minus a half is a half, which is actually good because there's a half on top and bottom of the fraction that we can just cancel out, leaving us with one minus a half to the n. Okay, so the half out the front and the denominator of the fraction both cancel each other out. Once again, we'll subtract one from both sides. So we get um, negative a half to the n 
is equal to negative one over one zero two four. So that number on the right is one zero two three over one zero two four, take away one. Okay, times in both sides by negative one. And now we have a half to the n equals one over zero two, oh, sorry, one zero two four. Now one to the anything is always gonna get us one. So we really care about the bottom numbers. We wanna find out two to the power of something gets us an answer of one zero two four. Okay, so we're essentially just gonna flip both sides of the equation and have two to the n equals one zero two four. Take log base two of both sides once again. And on the right hand side, if we type in log 1024 over log two, we get a value of 10. That tells us that two to the 10 is equal to 1024, which the coders in the channel might already know. Okay, there we go. So the first 10 terms of this geometric series add to give 1023 over 1024. Very cool. Okay, up next, we're looking at an HSC question from the 2011 exam, which is actually the exam paper that I did. Hopefully I got this question right. It was a band four or five question, so it's a fairly challenging application of series. If it's band five, it means a fair few people are getting it wrong. Okay, we have the number of members on a new social networking site, which is very a new idea in 2011. Um, in day one, there were 27 members. Day two, there were 54. So we uh, doubled from day one to day two. How many members were there on day 12 is part I for one mark. Okay, of course, we could just get our calculator out and double this number 12 times or 11 times, I suppose. But where's the fun in that? Let's use a geometric sequence. We have our starting value of 27. We're multiplying by two each time. We're trying to find the 12th term. So we're using our nth term of a sequence formula, which once again is A multiplied by R to the power of N minus one. So 12 minus one. Okay, on the right hand side, we're going to get 55,296. That's how many people there were on the 12th day of the social networking side. Okay, part two is now asking, on which day was the number of members first greater than 10 million? So once again, we are using our nth term formula, but we're trying to see when this number is going to be greater than 10 million. We have our value of A is still 27, our R is still um, two, we are trying to solve this inequality for n. So we're gonna solve this just like we would if it was an equation. We're gonna start off by dividing both sides by 27. On the right, we get this big number that I'm not gonna say a bunch of times because I'm tired. Okay, now once again, to solve for the power of base two, we are gonna take log base two of both sides. On the left-hand side, we'll be left with n minus one because the log base two and the two to the power are gonna cancel out. On the right, we are once again going to type in our logarithm with our log of the subject over log of the base. Okay, this gets us an answer. If we add the one across, um, we get an answer of about 18 and a half or 18.49. Now, because n needs to be bigger than 18.49, that means that on the 19th day, we will have more than 10 million members on the site. So there you go, if you said the 19th day with some reasonable working out, even if it is trial and error, as long as you're writing down what you're doing, you'll still be able to get full marks even if you aren't using the specific formulas or the specific method that I'm using. Okay, and for the last part, the site earns half a cent per day, sorry, per member per day. How much money did the site earn in its first 12 days? Give your answer to the nearest dollar. Okay, for this question, we really want to find the total number of people, or I guess the sum of the series, over the first 12 days. We're going to find day 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 12, and we're going to add them all together, because each person on the site each day gets us 0.5 cents. So that's how we're meant to interpret this question. We're meant to find the sum of the first 12 terms of the series using our geometric sum formula. So we're finding S12. We have a is 27, one minus two to the power of, um, that should be, yeah, two to the power of 12, pardon me, uh, over one minus two is one minus r. This gets us a value of 110,565. There's your one mark for getting that question. Now for two marks, we need to turn that into money. So each one of these people is getting us 0 0.5 cents. So all we need to do now is multiply this number by half a cent, and I'm gonna write this in dollars as 0.5. 005. This gets us an answer of $525.825. 
And I'm just reading now, it says give your answer to the nearest dollar. So I should have read the question properly and I should have wrote 526. Fingers crossed, I actually did that in 2011, but it's hard to say. Finishing off with a challenge question that really frustrates people every time I show this to them, but um, here we go. Here is a series, and I want you to find the first 40 terms of this series. If you like a challenge, by all means, pause the video and see if you can figure out the trick to this question. Some people see it quickly, some people just stare at it for ages and just can't see it. Okay, so looking at it, it doesn't really appear to be a geometric or an arithmetic series. We're going up by seven and then down by two and then up by five and then five again. It doesn't really seem like there's a pattern here until you step back and see the bigger picture like this. What this question actually is, is two series superimposed on each other, which has actually been done in the HSC once or twice as a mega tri uh, trick question. Today we're looking at this, okay? The red numbers we can see are forming a geometric series starting with five and multiplying by two. The blue numbers are forming an arithmetic series starting with 12 and adding three each time. So if we wanna find the sum of the first 40 terms of this series, we're really gonna find the sum of the first 20 of the red part, and then the sum of the first 20 of the blue part. So two separate series that we're gonna to add together and get our total value. So a reminder here is our sum of a geometric, oh, sorry, arithmetic series formula. And on the right is our new geometric series formula. All right, for our arithmetic series, we're gonna do n is 20. Uh, we're starting with a value of a is 12 and now d is equal to three. For our geometric, we're starting with a equals five. Our r value is equal to two because we're doubling each time. And we're gonna have once again, power of 20. So again, we're doing sum of the first 40 terms 20 of the arithmetic and 20 of the geometric. Here's our calculation, subbing into our formula. If we crunch this number, we get an answer of 5,243,685. If you got the same thing, you've done really well. Congratulations. Was that a word? I don't know. I'm tired. All right. Thank you for watching this Sunday edition of McGrathematics. Catch you guys later. Bye for now.